now friends uh, do this uh, brief journal review it's a good article that came in uh, called a proactive trial so as you see the title propranolol as an anxiolytic to reduce the use of sedatives for critically ill adult patients receiving mechanical ventilation a open label randomized controlled trial so this came by canadian authors in 2025 in critical care medicine so when i read this trial it appears that this may not be in keeping with the uh, the message that comes out of it but if you dwell a little deep into this so this has a some sort of a deeper connotations and uh, some sort of a practical relevance to our intensive care practitioners so it's a good trial actually it does give out a message because as you've been seeing i have covered two videos one on beta blockers in sepsis and beta blockers in traumatic brain injury i would say this particular trial is an extension further strengthening the concept of the benefit of using beta blockers in our icu i think that would be the background or the pitch that i would uh, have uh, when we discuss this trial so when you look at the background as to why this trial becomes important in critically ill patients we all understand that our patients are usually they tend to get agitated they are at a risk for delirium so why does this happen so the whole premise for this trial the delirium and agitation is due to we have understood due to over activity of sim sympathetic nervous system so there is when, when someone is critically unwell our sympathetic nervous system tends to get activated and we need some medications to alleviate this activation because this leads to deleterious problems and one of the problem is the delirium component and we have understood you can refer back to the video that i have shown of delirium there are a lot of components there are a lot of chemical changes that happens like acetylcholine five hydroxytryptamine gaba levels but now for this particular beta blocker we'll focus on nor norepinephrine or noradrenaline which is released at the locus ceruleus of the brain and this locus ceruleus which releases noradrenaline tends to act on the forebrain the front part of the brain which leads to activation of the sympathetic nervous system and the vicious conundrum so the propranolol is known to inhibit the action of norepinephrine that gets released at the locus ceruleus and and its activity on the forebrain propranolol tends to mitigate this pathway and by doing this it also we understand propranolol blocks the activation of sympathetic nervous system and that is how your whole delirium also can come down so this whole pathophysiology of del delirium is norepinephrine from the locus ceruleus acting on the forebrain that leads to delirium that leads to agitation and sympathetic nervous system activation and this action of norepinephrine on the forebrain can be mitigated by propranolol having beneficial effects to that effect so in that way it has some sort of a multimodal effect that it prevents activation of sympathetic nervous system and it prevents the activation of uh, norepinephrine on forebrain leading to mitigation of delirium so that is our understanding and we have understood beta blockers sort of catecholamine surge that tends to happen it mitigates and this catecholamine surge leads to brain hypoxemia that leads to secondary injury and beta blockers tends to have this effect on minimizing the injury on the brain and it tends to reduce the oxygen supply and demand sort of a deficit that exists in critically unwell patients so this is what we have understood and there are studies which have clearly shown i think you can refer back to the video on beta blockers in traumatic brain injury so beta blockers in uh, sort of traumatic brain injury so just to summarize and recall your memories this was a study which came in 2017 beta blockers and traumatic brain injury a systematic review meta analysis where they took nine studies and 8245 patients with traumatic brain injury and if you see in this particular study hospital mortality was significantly less in the group which got beta blocker 2005 patients had got beta blockers in this meta analysis compared to the control group and that was profoundly it sent out a signal favoring the use of beta blockers in traumatic brain injury and this was another study which was more recent 2021 from the chinese group beta blockers for traumatic brain injury here they had taken 15 studies 12721 patients even in this that shown 
that hospital mortality was significantly less and long term functional outcomes also were significantly better in beta blockers and adverse effect there was no difference. So these are two studies which puts up a premise that beta blockers has some favorable effect on the brain activity and it tends to improve the outcomes by the mechanisms that I said by mitigating the activation of sympathetic nervous system. Propranolol, if you look at the studies, there was this Canadian where they have used uh, in even as a therapeutic modality in post-traumatic stress disorder. And pro why propranolol is preferred amongst all beta blockers is it because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. So this is our background understanding. So now coming to this study, this was an open label randomized control trial done in three university hospitals in Canada. Interventions. So for all the audience, just pay attention to what they use. Interventions, they used propranolol 20 to 60 milligram every sixth hourly, which was titrated or calibrated to the desired effect that they looked at. What was the primary outcome they looked into this trial? Proactive trial. Primary outcome, they looked at the need for sedation and the need for the sedative dose from the baseline to the day three and the mean changes in the dose. So if you are using fentanyl or midazolam or dexmedetomidin, they looked whether it had any bearing on the sedate, the dose of the sedation and what was the change in the dose of the sedation in the group which got beta blockers or propranolol. Secondary outcome was to look at the proportion of the patients who were in the target range of the sedation. So it means whatever target you would have had to keep them comfortable, a proportion of patients who remained in the target sort of a uh, zone of desired sedation. The secondary outcome is they looked at ICO and hospital length of stay. They looked at the occurrence of delirium. See, again, why we spoke about delirium is because propranolol has a favorable effect, even on the delirium component. That is something I want intensivists to take home from this article. And secondary outcome was to look at the mortality and the costing because the argument in this case was that beta blockers helps to minimize the cost of that is incurred for using other sedations like dexmedetomidine or opioids. So that was another sort of a thing they looked at. So when you look at the results, they had 72 patients recruited from 21st Jan to October 2022. They were mostly, as you all recall, 21, we had more of COVID. Mostly it were COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 pneumonia they took. 69 out of 72 patients were males. The mean age of the patients were 54 years. Pay attention to the dose they used. Because as I said, 20 to 60 mg they used every 6th hourly. The mean dose, this is something which you can adopt and do a study of your own. The mean dose of propranolol they needed per day was 90 milligrams. So it's a big dose. So sometimes in TBI, we have started using beta blockers. We use 10 mg. Maybe we should try to look at increasing the dose. So 90 mg per day was the dose they used. And the mean duration of propranolol they used was for 10 days. So when you look at the results of the study, 72 patients randomized between propranolol and control group. And the reduction in the sedation dose was much higher. So the ability to reduce the sedation dose was much higher in propranolol as compared to the control group and that was significant. And proportion of the patients who achieved the target sort of a sedation also was much higher in propranolol. 48% of the patients achieved were in a good sort of a target zone as compared to the control group which was 35%. When they looked at mortality and adverse events, there was no difference. So this was usually a positive study which said by the why the, the use of propranolol it had an indirect effect so i think that is a message that we should get it had an ability to mitigate sympathetic nervous system it had an ability to possibly have a favorable effect on delirium and agitation which necessitated the lesser use of sedation so so, so don't look at it as propranolol having any adjunctive effect to the sedation rather it had an effect on the morbidity factor which necessitated the lesser use of sedation. I think that's the message I want the audience to get from this. Because when you look at the phase of it, you would argue, how wow, would propranolol have any bearing on the sedative dose? And this is the graphical representation. The, the lower line is the propranolol. As you see, the daily sedation dose was significantly less in the propranolol group. And they looked at whether there was any difference with the use of other sedations between two groups. This is the baseline. They used a lot of other drugs like dexmedetomidine, clonidine, haloperidol. There was no, they were equally matched. There was no major difference with the usage of other sort of a sedation between these two doses. The only difference was propranolol in the intervention group and in the 
and no, no propranolol in the control group. So as you see, they've used various drugs. So there was no sort of a, a differential dosaging between these other drugs that were used. So when you look at the other studies favoring propranolol, so this was a study from Colombia where propranolol was used in Burns patient. So this was a systematic review of 10 randomized controlled trials. Even in the Burns patient, propranolol showed favorable effect in reducing the hospital length of stay, although it did not show reduction in mortality. And this was a study from Canada, uh, single center retrospective study, where they looked at 64 mechanically ventilated patients who were on propofol, even in this propranolol, sorry, even in this study, propranolol group showed 86% reduction in the need of propofol in the group where there was propranolol and there was 50% reduction in the use of midazolam where these patients had propranolol. This, although this was a retrospective study in mechanically ventilated patients. And this was a UK study where propranolol was found to have favorable effect in post-traumatic stress disorder, which becomes an important component in the post-intensive care syndrome. So these are other studies to substantiate that propranolol has a multimodal favorable effect on minimizing the use of sedation and certain clinical outcome benefit also that was shown. And this was another study from Italy where uh, in 2023, they, they looked at whether other alternatives, whether they had any bearing. In fact, they looked at propofol. Propofol, they looked at meta-analysis, although it is claimed to be a better sedative than benzodiazepine. This particular meta-analysis showed significant increase in mortality with the use of propofol with a relative risk of more than 1.2 or 1.18 or something of that sort was there, which means to say propofol not necessarily may be a very safe drug in intensive care patients because this meta-analysis showed some signals towards increase in mortality. So this was another study from Wang et al. where if you look at other alternatives like clonidine, because earlier days, when I was in Australia, we used to use clonidine. Clonidine, this particular study showed there can be a small reduction in the opioid dose with the use of clonidine with a mean difference of minus 0.26. But there was no difference in hospital mortality. There was no difference in ICU or hospital length of stay. And there was no difference in the duration of mechanical ventilation. So in the discussion, authors have tried to see there's no other better alternative because they have looked at Wang, uh, clonidine, they have looked at propofol increases mortality. Propranolol, at least there are certain uh, signals favoring its usage by mitigating the sympathetic nervous system activation and maybe delirium component and so on, and which possibly helps in us not necessitating to use other sedative drugs. So that is the whole gist of this particular trial. Although dexmatomidine is an equally good drug, but there's no head-to-head -head comparison. So the conclusions they made at the end of this is propranolol was effective in reducing the need for the sedation because of its other effect, multimodal effect on minimizing possibly delirium component, and minimizing the sympathetic nervous system, which are the T-nets of increasing the need for sedation usage and increases the proportion of patients who tend to remain in the target zone of a good sort of a sedation. And there were no significant adverse effects. So this is also a strong message that came out of the study. So all in all, uh, my take on this study is increasingly we are seeing favorable benefit with the use of beta blockers. You can go refer back to the video of role of beta blockers in sepsis, where there are signals pointing out it has favorable effect. And the favorable effect is with the basic premise of mitigating the sympathetic nervous system activity, which leads to a lot of cytokine release and other interleukin release which have a detrimental effect and 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 the delirium component also significantly reduces because of the action or, or the physiological basis you saw where norepinephrine release from locus ceruleus is one of the important pathway which leads to delirium and propranolol has an ability to inhibit that pathway so these are the different ways by which it is shown to have a effect on even on the need for sedation so that is the take so thank you very much. So I request you all to submit your valuable work to a journal of acute care. You can visit my website to read to this lecture. So thank you. Thank you, one and all.